today i will explain my important concept which is concept of slip in induction motor we will use a word slip again and again almost in every case okay so slip is very important thing when we are studying induction motor but before discussing this topic first i will revise whatever i did so far okay so in first lecture i explain the rotating magnetic field expression was pi r is equal to 3 by 2 pi r cosine of omega t minus pi all the sign of pi will depend upon selection of direction but i explained that you must take a, a proper convention so that we can remove any kind of doubt okay so main thing was this is a constant magnitude but it is rotating okay so this is rotating magnetic field this is in magnitude 3 by 2 phi m rotating with speed of supply frequency speed of rotation is equal to supply frequency this is omega s and omega s is further equal to 2 by 2 pi f okay you can convert this into synchronous speed okay this is equal to 9.55 omega s okay all these things are explained in detail in previous lecture so i am not going to repeat same thing again and again so in first lecture i discussed that this much amount of rotating field will rotate for a b c phase sequence one another thing that i explained in that lecture was the direction of rotating magnetic field i explained this thing in both lecture direction of rotating field will be from leading phase to leading phase okay so this will be direction of rotating magnetic field regardless of phase sequence so important thing is this direction of rotation is independent of phase sequence okay if you are this if you reverse any two phase then also direction will be leading phase to leading phase although this will be it will be reverse of sequence a b c okay so if you reverse two phases a b a c b then direction of rotating will field will be reverse of whatever it is okay first thing is rotating magnetic field second thing that i explained was second thing was when rotating magnetic field I is equal to three by two pi m cosine of omega t minus pi. If we supply three phase supply phase sequence A B C, rotating magnetic field pi r, which is 3 by 2 pi m in magnitude here will be rotor this is a conductor on rotor just for example there will be several conductors and ended with end ring and ring is 
of conducting material so that due to induced EMF in rotor conductor current can flow. Okay. So for example, this is a one conductor. Okay. So due to this magnetic field, conductor magnetic field which is rotating with speed ns, this conductor on rotor will experience relative motion. Due to this relative motion, there will be induced EMF in this rotor conductor. Whatever it is, it will depend upon direction of rotating magnetic field. This may be a dot or cross. Now, this will also rotate. Rotor will start rotate in same direction as it is stator with speed of nr. When we apply supply to stator, due to this supply, there will be rotating magnetic field with speed of ns. Due to this rotating magnetic field, this rotor conductor will experience relative motion. So due to this relative motion, induce EMF in this rotor conductor. So rotor is closed. So due to, uh, due to closed structure of rotor, there will be current flow in rotor conductor. And due to current flow, conductor will experience a torque. And through the, due to this torque, rotor will start rotating. Now, this is the speed of the stator magnetic field, which is rotating with the speed of NS. Now, rotor will start with a rotating, start rotating initially at zero speed, okay? So, it's accelerated at initially and finally get steady state at N, okay? Now, question is, whether it is possible that NR is greater than NS. Practically and theoretically, both cases, in any kind of induction motor structure, any kind of induction motor st structure, whether it is a netting mode, rotor fade, doubly fade, any kind of structure, induction motor will never run at synchronous speed. Okay? In previous lecture, I discussed this in a very detailed manner that why induction motor will not run at speed of synchronous speed or at NS. So, reason is quite clear. Now, the important thing is this difference. This difference is NS minus NI. And when this motor or this mus induction machine is running in motoring mode, then NR will be less than NS. Okay. What will happen when NR, NR can be more than NS? No problem. But it cannot be equal to NS. Okay. Now, this thing is important. This is actually difference in the speed. Okay. Before discussing about slip. First I will discuss speed of magnetic field with respect to stator. Suppose this is NS. This is speed of stator magnetic field with respect to stator. Speed of stator magnetic field with respect to stator. Okay. is the speed of rotor, it will be less than ns. This is ns minus nr. Okay. But the interesting thing 
is the speed of rotor magnetic field of rotor magnetic field with respect to state. So speed of rotor magnetic field and stator magnetic field both will be ns regardless for any speed of rotor so if rotor uh, speed increase to this suppose this is nr1 this is nr2 then this will be ns minus nr okay but total speed or speed of rotor magnetic field with respect to each data this is ns and the reason is the rotor conductor is rotating with speed of nr okay now the magnetic field in rotor conductor itself is rotating with speed of ns plus nr and rotor conductor and magnetic field in rotor both are on same body so same body same direction both will be added to so nr plus ns minus nr sum of these two field will be always ns okay so the conclusion is speed of stator magnetic field and the speed of rotor magnetic field i will discuss this topic soon but first i will revise all the concept which i discussed so far so both speed of stator magnetic field and speed of rotor magnetic field and both are with respect to stator body stator body and both will be always ns okay now the difference is suppose this is phi s phi r phi s is stand for s is stand for stator r is stand for rotor suppose rotor is rotating in this direction with speed of n r so only difference in rotor and stator magnetic field is angular difference not the speed difference in rpm only difference in theta radian okay in case of rotor speed in case of case of rotor speed there will be huge difference in rpm but in case of stator and rotor magnetic field both are rotating with speed of ns only difference is angular difference you can compare this thing with synchronous speed in synchro in syn sorry synchronous machine in case of synchronous machine let's say this is fire field flux phi a is armature flux phi r is resultant flux only both are rotating at speed of ns okay so in synchronous machine both field are rotating with speed of ns in induction machine both field are rotating at speed of ns only difference is in synchronous machine rotor is also rotating at ns and rotor field is also rotating at speed of ns and here thing is difference different thing is there because in case of induction motor the difference between uh, synchronous speed and rotor magnetic field is necessary in synchronous machine it is not okay suppose in the angle alpha okay so this phase difference must be there when there uh, suppose load is increased more armature flux angle will increase okay so as load decreases angle will decrease as load increases angle will increase okay
So this is some similarity. Now concept of slip. Slip is important quantity. I will just define what is actually slip is. The important thing about slip is it will be always with respect to synchronous speed. Okay. And generally we will concentrate first concept of slip only for induction machine. And when induction machine is used as induction motor, how to utilize in rotor fed, double fed, we will discuss later. Now, slip is defined as S is equal to NS minus NR divided by NS. So important thing is this will be always there. So always with respect to synchronous speed. Always with respect to synchronous speed. Why slip is useful in induction machines? Okay. Now slip is important because it is actually uh, decide, it will decide loss of a rotor copper loss gross mechanical power output efficiency So all these things will be characterized by this quantity slave and you will get good insight if I will explain this with help of characteristics and equivalent circuit. Okay. So I will explain with help of equivalent circuit that how slip is important. You all are familiar with this equivalent circuit. This is equivalent circuit of transformer. Applied voltage is V1. Output voltage is V2. This is equivalent circuit of transformer. Okay. We can approximate the current circuit. This is magnetizing glass. Sometimes we will use magnetizing glass, sometimes not. Okay, it will depend upon type of question. Question will decide whether we have to consider or not. RM, J, X. This is E1, this is E2. Now, voltage is applied to one side of transformer, secondary side is low. Okay. Now, what will happen in case of induction motor? Three possibility. First one is secondary shorted.
second possibility is connected with resistance third possibility is connected to grid all three possibility in case of induction type of device now second is shorted this is possible in cage rotor machine cage rotor machine in which a uh, conducting conductor so conductors are shorted with end ring so we cannot introduce any kind of resistance or we cannot connect secondary to grid so cage rotor and these all three things are possible in wound rotor induction motor or machine okay so we can short we can connect external resistance or we can connect to grid this is done with help of slip rings which are provided on rotor shaft okay now i will start with secondary short most often this is used external resist uh, resistance are generally used at starting not at loading condition during loading condition resistance are not useful these are useful only for starting during starting resistance will increase starting torque how introduce of introduction of resistance will increase starting torque i will explain but for now I will start this. Okay. First thing is induction motor. This is sorted because assume that this is wound cage rotor induction machine and conductor are sorted with end ring. Okay. Now supply is stator supply. This is per phase current. so now instead of prime rail assume this is stator v1 is applied to stator in this emf in stator is e1 there will be leakage emf of course so leakage emf equivalent to its inductance this is mutual emf okay now it is start it is starting induction motor will be equal to transformer with sorted secondary reason is reason is very simple because the frequency of supply is f and f because rotor conductor is stationary but as rotor start rotating emf or relative speed between rotor conductor and rotating magnetic field will reduce and it will attend a frequency f2 okay this is supply frequency and f2 is frequency of rotor so generally we will use subscript fs and fr fr so fs is frequency of stator current and fr is frequency of rotor current okay now e2 is um, actually equation of induced emf e is equal to e proportional to, okay e proportional to f phi n okay phi will be same let's say n r same for simplicity n r same so e and flux are same so e will be proportional to s okay so the frequency of supply is fs but frequency of rotor current or fr which is different than fs so the this quantity f2 is frequency sensitive element 
So instead of ZF2, it will be ZSF2 when motor is running. Okay. So in running mode, speed will be other than NS of relative magnetic field. Okay, relative magnetic field is actually speed of stator magnetic field and rotor. So as rotor speed increases, frequency will decreases because relative motion NS minus NR will decreases as NR increases. So S will be there because inductance are frequency sensitive quantity. So frequency of rotor current will be different. So this inductance will be different. And this inductance is due to leakage plus. Okay. Now as you suppose frequency was initially F S F then even and this is E2 but as frequency of this current will change this will be as E2 instead of E2 ok now actually referring is not possible we, will we can refer with help of N1 by N2 when this is E1 and this is E2 because ratio of E1 by E2 is equal to N1 by N2 but when S is, S itself is very, this is very. So now problem is, how to handle varying EMF, okay. Suppose if it's 0 0.03, uh, it will be difference, the ratio of these two. Uh, suppose if it's 0 0.05, this ratio will be different. So how to solve this problem so simple way let's explain one thing so far it is actual equivalent circuit of induction motor okay or induction machine i will use these two words alternatively or interchangeably okay reason is general things are same in induction machines but only difference is direction of power ok so we will see in case of generator if s is negative power will flow from water side to stator ok but for now this is original equivalent circuit of induction mode now we will modify ok we will modify this is rotor magnetic uh, field circuit equivalent circuit is this this is S E2 R2 J S F2 let's say this is I2 ok so I2 is equal to S E2 divided by R2 plus Yes. The SF. Now a simple manipulation can be done. We can manipulate by dividing numerator and denominator by S. Then what will happen? This equation. In this equation will not alter current. Current will be same. And that should be. So that we can refer current as well as voltage ok because if you uh, change EMF then if S is introduced in I2 then no benefit because we can refer EMF but we can't refer current but for now we can refer current as well as EMF because both are slip free ok so now I2 equal to E2 divided by R2 so this is equal as
this is equivalent circuit. So equivalent circuit can be put in this. We can replace this as this as this is it. So this is the equivalent circuit. So actually this quantity slip is important for us. It will divide power flow and uh, losses and all these things. So from this a point onwards I will start discuss how slip will decide power flow losses and different quantity is starting okay and the steady state uh, value of torque maximum torque all these things and how starting torque can be increased with with help of resistance equation of torque, torque slip characteristic. So from next lecture onward I will discuss that things. So this was short review of slip concept, okay?